What's up, y'all? Hey. I am with my homeboy. One and only. Jamal. Yeah, 614, stand up. Wait, 614, that's Ohio? Yeah, it's Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, Columbus. Columbus, Ohio. You already know. Jamal, I like what you said. You said you proud to say what? I said I'm proud to live. I'm on the locals, you know, well all due respect, I'm not trying to be an Africa, be bougie, you know what I mean? I love this, y'all. So, yeah. I'm so excited. Y'all see my vibe way up. Y'all yeah. see my vibe way up because yeah, I sure. love this vibe. I love this energy. I love, um, Jamal yeah. is actually one of the few African Americans like me. Yeah. We live in the community yeah, in the yeah, uh, community sure. we live in the community yeah. we live among the kenyans right yeah, yeah, and so yeah. you know we don't look at he looking back why are you looking <laughs> we uh we live <laughs> among the um i'm so among... excited so i will be talking to my brother oh, yeah, i'm so sure, excited sure. I'm, so, I'm excited to be right here up, oh, i'm sure you're around the neighborhood too okay yeah, good we'll go you gonna show me? Ah! Yeah. <laughs> i'm so I might, excited I might, I might even show you how to get on the tuk tuk okay we're gonna get on yeah. Wait, y'all got tuk-tuks over here. I love tuk-tuks. Yeah, yeah. So I only get on the tuk-tuks when I'm in Gianni. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah. I like the idea mm -hmm. that we might be able to get on the tuk-tuks. Oh, so. I get on tuk-tuks every day. Yeah. For real? Mm -hmm. I love the tuk-tuks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, y'all. Y'all stay tuned. Uh, Peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you get all, you come here, you get all your meat. Do they have mm -hmm. fresh chicken and all yeah, of that? Uh, not chicken, more beef. Beef, okay. Beef and goat. Beef yeah, and goat. Oh, right. I see the goat yeah, right there. Going through pork. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But you can probably, you know, the grocery stores are expensive, so you can probably get it mm -hmm. a little cheaper here. Yeah, we're going to get it there for like 200 shillings here. Wait, yeah, yeah. 200 for what? For, for meat. Yeah, it can last, it, that could give us like, it could last for like the whole supper. It could feed like four or five people. Where does it Wow, mm -hmm. nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh-huh. Nice. nice. Okay. Yeah. So you, this is this your complex? This is right here. Okay. Yeah. All right, y'all. I am here. I call him. This is my homeboy. Although we from different states, yeah, sure. he is still um, my homeboy because this is my African American yeah. brother, <laughs> and I'm so excited to be here mm -hmm. with him. And so I'm gonna let Jamal introduce himself. Just tell people a little bit. Something right, about peace, you. everybody. My name is Jamal from Columbus, Ohio, six one four. Been living in Kenya for about a year and a half. Uh, a I live in the Mihoka War area. Uh, this is like a suburban Nairobi. Um, you know, uh, you know, I just be chilly though. Know, uh, loving the African vibe. You yeah. Know, you know, I had to get together with my homegirl, uh, Carrie. You know, yeah. You know, she, I like what she's doing. She do a lot of positive content. So I appreciate her letting me come on her platform. I, I appreciate you being here. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate you being here. Yeah. So here you are. You've been here mm -hmm. what almost two years mm -hmm. in in um in Nairobi yeah. as an African American man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What are some of the differences that you notice from being here and in the states? Oh, that's a that's a that's a loaded question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a lot of a lot of differences. Not too much. We got a lot of similarities. Uh, you know, you got good, bad people, you know, uh, just like in the U.S. Uh, uh, but as far as the uh, differences, mm, I might say maybe the music. You know, they, music. Like, yeah, they like a lot of, uh, what's it called, bongo music? Uh-huh. You, know, you know, we, we old school. But you like listening like, to the, the U.S. hip-hop? You no, know, my, my two favorite artists, they are, they are tied for number one. They totally different. Is Tupac, Tupac, and Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson yeah, and Tupac. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. What else have you noticed um, as far as like your mood, your mm -hmm. energy? You know, it's a lot What's... more peaceful. Um, the only, yeah. the, my only complaint about uh, I can't say Kenya, more of Nairobi is the traffic. The traffic. You know, uh, in, in the U.S., if I just wanted to go to like a local store, like it gets something easy, like a Walgreens or CVS. You just hop in the car, hit a corner, you're there. But here, if you want to hit a corner, you got to watch for Batatu, Tutu, <laughs> Boda. So even that is a trip. You know, that's, so that's just, a, that's just a energy being spent alone. You know? so it's just it's easy like, access to that. Do you remember the, you know, I'm, I'm probably telling my age, mm -hmm. but do you remember the game Frogger? There was like, okay, so back in the day, there used to be a game called Frogger. And, you know, the frog used to have to jump across a busy highway. Yeah. And that's how it is here sometimes. Yeah. You know, you watch it out for the matatus, yeah. the, you know, the bodas, yeah, cows. Yeah, the, yeah. Cow, the cows ruled, though. Yeah, they just the take cows, their time. The, 
they, 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 just, they, just, they look at you with an attitude. Right? Yeah, they look like, at you like, what you going to do? Right? Yeah. The cows be like, look, yeah. look, this, I've been on this street first. Like, yeah. y'all go around. The yeah. cows be like, move around. Right, right, right. <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, and so, and you said the peace. Yeah. You know, and I hear a lot of people talk about the peace. Mm -hmm. I talk about the peace yeah. when, when coming on the continent yeah. and the peace that we feel, yeah. you know, when we're here. Where do you think that peace comes from? From. Uh, one, you know, this is who we are. We are African people. You know, mm -hmm. don't let anybody fool you. You know, we we got a lot of anti-African people amongst us, but you know, uh, at the end of the day, even Malcolm X said, "We are Africans. We happen to be in America." You That's know what I'm it. Saying? So uh, we're Africans yeah. and happen to be in America. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, you know. So uh, I never deny my Africanism. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm proud to be African. You me know too. what I'm saying? I don't like it when people call me a black American. Uh, yeah, I don't like it. You know, can you take out the African? Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, so just being back here above the ancestors, you know, it just, it just does something for you, you know. It just, it just brings peace. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, I know they proud that they see some of us coming back to the continent. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and I and I'm feeling that love too mm -hmm. because um there are so many Africans and Kenyans, even yeah. in particular, they have welcomed me yes. and said, you know, welcome home. Yes. And so I don't even know mm -hmm. how I don't know if they understand yeah. how powerful that is yeah. for them to mm -hmm. welcome African Americans, yeah. you know, back home, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know if um Kenyans or Africans understand how much they mean to us. Yes, yes. See yes, when we yes. come back, we don't come back like the Mazungu. Yes, we yes, don't come yes. to pillage and yes, to you know yes. and to rape, but we come back to partner and empower. Yes, yes. Right? And so what I, so tell me like what made you I mean You've grown up and you you're from Ohio. Yeah. You've grown up there, yeah. right? You you are an African American. Mm -hmm. What made you say I'm going to Africa? Um, it it was long overdue. You know, I had hit up, up a lot of the Caribbean countries. You know, oh, okay. I have been to Haiti. I have been to Jamaica. In both of them countries, you know, give you the African feeling. Yeah, you know, especially, especially Jamaica too. Oh, man, Jamaica know, give you that African yeah. feel. Yeah. So sometimes you know, I felt like I was in Africa while I was in them countries. Mm -hmm. So you know, but then you know, I start going to other countries like Costa Rica. Yeah, I've been to Mexico. I've been to Nicaragua. I told myself, man, it's time to get to get to Africa. You know what I'm saying? So that that's what it was. So I think it was in uh, 2018. I had started started the plan. Mm -hmm. On which countries to go to. Mm -hmm. It came down to three countries. It what came down three? to uh, Ghana, Nigeria, and Kenya. Oh. Uh, I, 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 want, I, I thought about going to Ghana. Um, I say this with all due respect. I love my Ghanaian brothers and sisters. Yeah, I love anytime any of us go to Ghana. But yeah. see, like, anytime you ask somebody from the U.S. if they've been to Africa... It's like eighty five percent of them say Ghana. Yeah, yeah you know, what I'm saying? yeah. Africa is so yeah. much more than Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Cameroon, you got Togo, Ivory Coast, Sierra you got Sudan, Leone. Sierra Leone. You know, it just it's such a broad confidence. Even here in East Africa, you got Tanzania, Uganda, South Sudan. You got Southern Africa. You got Botswana. Burundi, Zimbabwe. Yeah. It's like you don't hear it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and you and when we do come, you're right. Mm -hmm. We're either going to Ghana, which all due respect, yeah, because I do want to go, um, I haven't been to West Africa yet. Okay. And and so yeah. I am definitely gonna visit Ghana, Nigeria, yeah. and all those places. Yeah. But we tend we do tend to flock to the West. Yeah. We don't we don't go to, we don't come to Kenya, mm -hmm. Tanzania, mm -hmm. Uganda. Have to deal with, you know, with the slave trade. You yeah, know, that's yeah, where yeah. a lot of our DNA come from. But one thing we have to realize if it wasn't for the Berlin Conference that put a lot of these borders on these African countries, we just one continent. Preach. So we cannot, you know, just limit ourselves to a tribe or to a country because for hundreds and thousands of years, we was all one people. It was the Europeans that divided us. That divided country. us, right. Mm -hmm. And we had like different empires yeah. as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I always said that like mm -hmm. when I, um, even when I was, I was, I passed through when I was going to um, South Africa, mm -hmm. we had like a layover in Ghana where we didn't get off the plane, but some Ghanaians got yeah. on the plane. Yeah. And I don't know what it was. Um, I don't know if it was a particular tribe or whatever, but I said, I don't feel like I'm related to mm -hmm. these particular Ghanaians that got on the plane. And then when when I did my DNA thing, which a lot of people are against DNA, but I went on ahead and did it. I have less than 
three percent of Ghanaian. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm yeah. saying? And so we fly, but I, I have less than three yeah. percent. But I tell people all the time, but I am my mother's line does go up to um Nigeria and my yeah. and, and and a lot I have a lot of Bantu blood, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so but I'm saying that to say West Africa was the pickup spot. Yes, yes, yes. Do you see yes, what I'm saying? Yes. That was the pickup spot. But yes. even before we got there, we came from other, other places, places on this yes. continent. Mm -hmm. And so I never understood why I was not. Within me, mm -hmm. I, I didn't have a pull to mm -hmm. West Africa. Yeah. I went to South Africa and mm -hmm. with Kenya, I had a pull. Mm -hmm. It was like something here. And when I got here and I started seeing all these Bantus yeah. and I started seeing people that look like my brother. Like I know when they see you, yeah. they don't do they think you American? Nope. No. I have been here for almost two years and I've been visiting on and off since twenty nineteen, even when I was visiting. Nobody has yet to realize who I am just by looking at me. Right. 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm approaching Swahili. Period. You're what? What do they think? Okay, they, oh, they, you they about to tell to, us. Wait, y'all, yeah. wait, because yeah. I always try to do this. Yeah. They're about to, he about to tell us who they think he is. Which tribe? So what tribe do they usually they think They say, from? a lot of times they say Lua. Yeah, yes, I would have said that too. I would have, I would have said a yeah. Luya yeah. for you because mm -hmm. I said when I look at you, I don't know how I'm doing it, yeah. um, Jamal. Yeah. But I'm starting to be able to look at people and tell what tribe they come yeah. from. Wow. I don't know how I'm able to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to do it. Mm -hmm. But I look at you, you look like a Bantu man. Bantu? Okay. You look like a Bantu. Which mm -hmm. Luyas are Bantus? Yeah, okay. Kakuyus are Bantus, mm -hmm. right? But anyway, so you had three countries on your list. Yeah. You had Nigeria, you had Ghana, mm -hmm. and you had Ken mm -hmm. Kenya. How yeah. can you win? Uh, this is how Kenya won. You know, after, you know, I told myself, you know, let's let take Ghana out of it. Um, I thought about Nigeria. Can you talk about DNA? You know, I did mine for Ancestry.com. Okay. The majority came up at Nigeria. I think 48%. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I told myself it would be a beautiful that my first African country would be something that's been proven my lineage come from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But at that time, they had the elections going into 2019. There's a lot of stuff going on in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And then I saw back in 2018 that... Uh, Kenya has started Kenya Airways. They have, they always have Kenya Airways, but they started direct flights. Yes, yes. I think yes. we saw that same interview. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I saw that. Go ahead. Yeah, so when they saw that, I'm like, God, I don't like to be in the air too long. You know, I mean, one for place to place and stuff like that. You know, so when I saw that, you know, direct flight from New York to to the mm -hmm. I said, you know, let's let's uh let's make it let's make it happen. Let, Let's be, let me be a little bit different because, like you said, a lot of us say we've been to Ghana. Yeah. Even some might say Nigeria. And then you might even say Southern Africa, which is the bougie country. Mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think I ever bet, you know, African Americans say I've been to Kenya. You wow. know, as a matter of fact, you know, one thing I'm honored about being to Kenya, it wasn't until my fiance told me this. She said, not too many, you know, black people from America come here. So, you know, I'm the first kid American that a lot of these people have ever had. I got to represent That's for true. a whole 40 million people. If they have one bad experience, they're going to label it as all, it, all of, of us. Of right. So I always got to represent for us here. Yes, yeah. yes. And so, was Kenya your first African country yep. that you've ever been to? Yep. I, I was about to. I was about to go to Tanzania, Uganda, but that's when COVID happened. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, that was big money. If, even if I just wanted to go to Arusha, Tanzania, which is about three hours away, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not sure if they changed it now, but you have to pay COVID tests and then PCR tests and then come back, get yellow fever. It's just too much. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I, just, I still go to do it one day, you know, mm -hmm. but that, that's what slowed me down with COVID hit, you mm -hmm. know. I, said, I was yeah. going to at least visit the bordering countries. Yeah, so yeah. But you, before you even met us as a group, yeah. you can't, when I when I first met Jamal mm -hmm. was in our um, group, we had yeah, a meetup right. yeah. with the with, with some of the black expats, yeah. and Jamal walked in there like Antoine Fisher, like, <laughs> where y'all been? Y'all my family, been. where y'all yeah. y'all been here? Yeah. It's amazing how so many when we come and there's a couple of other people I met a couple. Yeah. Um, I met a couple the other day. Yeah. African Americans, they're new in the group too. Yeah, I'm really not gonna mention their name because yeah. they like being laid back. Yeah, but sure. it's it's our latest couple yeah. who's in the group. 
um, they spotted me and um, Simone out eating, wow, right? Seriously. And they were like, I was like, are y'all part of the They was like, no, we don't know nothing about mm -hmm. anything about the group. So there's more of us here yeah. than what we realize, yeah, right? I have been here, you know, for a good year before I heard of the X Factor. Yeah. What happened was, you know, I was watching one of Britney's videos and I commented. Shout out to uh, Britney. Yeah, shout out to Britney. I commented on her video. I said, I wish there was more of us here or something like that. And then she she replied to my comment said there's a whole group on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Then I joined a Facebook page, uh, Faye added me. Then she added me to the WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. I was like, for the longest, I thought I was like the only one here. The, yeah, you know, like, yeah. I never ran into one. I think right. the only time I ever ran into one was at the Yanni's last year. Okay. You know I don't okay. think I ever ran into one here at the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there, but you know, we're coming. I thank God that we are coming. Yeah. We're coming. Yeah. And so, but, but. I also say there's a lot of us here, but we don't know until yeah until yeah. we open our mouth. Exactly, you know, I about to came across maybe twenty or thirty. After and you just didn't know. And didn't know. So, yeah. didn't know. Okay, so I wanna I wanna go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, all, everything that's happening in the the U S. All mm -hmm. the the violence. Yeah. You know the the mass shootings yeah. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, as a black man, mm -hmm. right, or African American man, excuse yeah. me, yeah, being good. here on the continent, mm -hmm. are you afraid, or do you have any tension when you see police officers here? Heck no. You know, they 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 tell you it's a rarity for a police officer to commit, you know, uh, some kind of shooting on somebody. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because. They say they are only do it if it's like the last resort. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because you see a lot of police officers, they don't even carry guns. You know, they got the big clubs, but they don't even carry guns. Mm -hmm. You know, so and security is top notch. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so I know America like to make the argument about freedom and stuff like that, but too much freedom is allowing this bad shooting. Mm -hmm. As you know by living here, if you walk into your local grocery store, they got better detectors. They, Mm -hmm. They checking for you, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They it, do. It, 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 it um, avoids a lot of these violence, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I have yet to hear anybody get killed here ever since I've been here. Mm -mm. But, Me you know, either. But back in Columbus, I will probably hear gunshots, you know, every every week, or hear somebody be killed, you know. What I mean, not just in Columbus, let yeah. alone at places like Philly, Chicago, New York. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying America is definitely the murder capital of the world. Mm -hmm. so I, I never have to worry about being killed here. Right, and 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 that feeling, you mm -hmm. know, I I heard another African American man say that he was visiting. He's like, I'm going back home, mm -hmm. packing my stuff, and I'm moving here because yeah. he said it was like a a relief off of his back. And mm -hmm. I guess I never because I'm not an African American man, mm -hmm. right? And so it's almost like when y'all are in America, mm -hmm. like you do have the second sense, like let me watch out for myself, oh, right? Yeah, You're yeah. trained very early. Say this mm -hmm. to the police. Don't say that to the police. But then when you come to Africa, it seems like you don't have that burden. Oh. Mm -mm. It's freedom. Yeah, the only thing you have to worry about in Africa, well, at least here in Kenya, is um, theft. Theft, you know yeah. So you yeah. gotta be careful. You just can't be out. And you gonna get scammed. Can we just tell people you gonna get scammed? Let me tell y'all. <laughs> let me tell you something. I always try to use this this story about greedy people. Mm -hmm. you know, people always you you touched on it on one of your videos. I never talked to you about this. Like like, like these drivers, they always want more money. Yeah. Okay, so you might win short term. But yeah. you lose long term. You're gonna lose long term. Because yeah. there's two drivers, one named George, one named Joseph. Okay, listen. So, so pay attention, y'all. So let's just say I want to go to TR um Two Rivers North, which is quite a distance from here. It might be a thousand shilling. So George George, I tell George, no, our Uber costs a thousand, thousand shilling. And George tell me, Okay, give me twelve hundred. I might give him the twelve hundred. He'll take me. I never call him again. That's it. That's it. That yeah, is it. 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 That and is. I think if somebody, and I said I was going to do a live about this, mm -hmm. about, you know, doing, because somebody had asked about, you know, how do you do business? Yeah. How can, you know, you help Kenyans and mm -hmm. empower Kenyans? And to me, that's the number yeah. one way. Yeah. Because what I don't think that um, Kenyans understand how our yeah. business sense and yeah. how we do business. Yeah. So Definitely. you may, if, if, if I know you overcharging me, yeah. I'm going to pay you, but you will never see yeah. me again. Yeah. So would you rather a a, a, a quick, yeah, yeah, you know, you, uh, you turn on that faucet, it's quick, mm -hmm. but that's it. You don't yeah. have anything else. But if you have a consistent drip, mm -hmm. man, your money is, yeah, you yeah. get yeah, more. Exactly. You now, get more. Now on the flip side, the other driver, Joseph, he's agreed to the thousand. He right? agreed to the he thousand. He talked to me to Two Rivers Mall. I'm about to call him the next day. So the other guy got 200 more. 
But I called Joseph again. Now you got two thousand children. And how now you that? already got eight hundred right. more to you just for being a a, 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 a sincere man. Yes. Now I might call him three days the more. He got three thousand. You still got the twelve hundred. Do y'all get the math? Yeah. Do y'all get the math? Yes. So, it's not worth it, so the one, yeah. So the one who want to who want to be greedy yeah. to charge you twelve hundred, he yeah. still got less. The one yeah. who charged you that thousand so, in three days, he done I, made three thousand yeah. dollars, and that other one didn't make nothing off anything mm -hmm. off of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have to give a shout out to my driver. You know what I'm saying? He's a good shout guy out. because you know, I had him for the past year and a half. He has never overcharged me. He never questions me. I always ask, you know, I always match Uber and he takes me wherever I need to go. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have always kept him for the past year and a half. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm but let me tell you this I can't, there's only one person that I am going to shout I'm not going to shout out now, but I, I'm going to bring him on okay. to do a video. All and right. that's my attorney. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shout him out. I've had some good drivers, and I'm testing. I have some in, the, in that's testing, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's. So I'm not shouting you out till you prove mm -hmm. yourself, right? Yeah. But I have a driver that I always used when I go to the coast. Okay. Oh, since I moved here, mm -hmm. I always use this driver, mm -hmm. right? And so this last time I went on the coast, I, I was like, I'm about to, I'm gonna put his name up there, I'm put his telephone number. I'm a, he about to be put on, right? Mm -hmm. Even Kenyon's gonna call him because he's yeah. proven to be honest. Mm -hmm. When I was there the last time, that last trip, he yeah. over, he tried to get over. Oh wow! I was like, mm -hmm. Ugh! here we go. Yeah, because if you go. get old, if you try to get over, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna call you anymore. Yeah. I'm gonna pay you, but I'm not gonna call yeah. you, and I'm not gonna put your your name out mm -hmm. there, right? Yeah. And so that's you know even with, even like with my house help, like the one I have now. I be putting in a group. Mm -hmm. She's looking for this. She's looking for that. Because mm -hmm. we're gonna, if you are on, listen. If you do business good, if you're honest, you are gonna make more money off of African Americans, mm -hmm. off of these experts. You gonna make more money, wouldn't mm -hmm. you agree? Yeah. You know, and that's what we come for. We come not to take, but to empower, yeah. to partner, to mm -hmm. build, and that's how mm -hmm. we're able to build together. Right. You can't if you're greedy and wanting it quick, like you mm -hmm. cutting off. Yeah. You cutting you're cutting yourself off, but mm -hmm. if you're consistent at a decent rate and you're mm -hmm. consistent, man, y'all yeah. will be rich. Y'all yeah, will be rich. A lot of us, we we been here for a while. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, people still treat, at least me, they still treat me like a tourist. Like right, oh, they think you're a tourist, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I know prices for every, almost everything. Yes, I know. You know. If I call it a two two, it should be no more than thirty or forty bob. But tied to no more than, mm -hmm. than forty or fifty bob. You know, if I go to town, it might be a hundred bob. Mm -hmm. So, come on, people, you can't you mm -hmm. can't get me. You mm -hmm. can't get me. And like even the the um the Uber driver who bought me here, right? Mm -hmm. Which I have his number, so I'm gonna call him again because he was good. Yeah. But you know what I did? Although I paid Uber, yeah, I broke him off another two hundred. You okay. know why? Because he sat there and he waited yes. until you came. Even before I got in his car, see, service. This is another thing. Y'all want to mm -hmm. know how to be put on yeah. as far as doing business. If you give good customer service, yeah. if you are consistent, and if you are not greedy, good customer service, mm -hmm. consistency, and not greedy, y'all, y'all, y'all would be on. Yeah. So he didn't, when I got in his car, when he picked me up, yeah. he wasn't greedy. He, he, he wasn't complaining and fussing like, oh, I've been waiting for yeah. you, da, da, da. He didn't give me any of that. Yeah. I did. I went live on the way here, yeah. right? Yeah. I went live, and he. I mean, he just was. You know, we were just talking or whatever. Yeah. And so when we got here, I was like, okay, he's coming. So he he waited. He said, no problem, no problem. Mm -hmm. Although Uber is paying him, mm -hmm. I broke him off. Oh wow, 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 wow. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. He didn't we, ask me for it. Mm -hmm. so what what did a lot of Uber drivers do here? And boat drivers, they always like to cancel on you too. Yeah, you know, y'all gotta, y'all can't pick and choose where y'all want to go. I said this on Britney's <laughs> video. I'm getting sick of y'all. I'm letting y'all know right there. I, I got, I got my old driver. This business sometimes, tips, y'all. Business tips. Sometimes tip. he might not be available. I have to call an Uber. People, stop picking and choosing where you are going to go. It did telling me to cancel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I won't cancel. I'm letting you know that now. If I'm on boat. If you're playing game, I switch to Uber and make sure you cancel. If I'm on Uber, I switch the boat. Yeah. I'm not going to cancel. I'm not going to reward you for not be, for being lazy and not want to take me to my destination. Right, yeah. right. Like partnering and what, with each other. What that we have to, you know, be mindful of, you know, we can't always look at the symptoms for what they is. We got to get to the root of the problem. The we cannot ignore what colonialism did to Africa. Uh, you know, put these people in a poverty mindset to where they have to come up and catch up to the West.
Mm. You know, so we're not going to excuse y'all, friends. We're not going to excuse y'all, Brit, Portuguese, the Brits, Brits, and all of those people. The white man. The white white man, because when they were doing a number on us, they were doing a number on them as well. Right? For sure, for sure. And so that's why I believe that Mama Africa, you know, is calling us home so that we can join together as brothers and sisters and Mm. build empires together, like how we used to. Yes, yes. Right? We're going to get there. We're going to get there. there. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's, you know, Kidogo, Kidogo. We're going to get there. (laughs) And so, do you think. Let's talk about, you know, black people and black people, um, African-American people's perspective as it relates to Africa. What do you say to African-Americans that's back home and they're like, we're not going to know Africa. Our ancestors built America. We're going to fight. We're going to fight for for the, we don't care. We've been fighting 400 years. We built it. We're going to stay here and we are going to fight. What do you think about that? First of all, let them stay. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's just tell like it is. It. You know, you said, let them stay. Let them stay because we spend too much energy trying to convince uh, grown people what they should or what they should is, is that you know, 2019. I go back to even I think 2018 where you had the uh, whole Wakanda movement. Even though yeah. that's the fictional uh, country. They had the a, that was a powerful. People. That was a yeah, fictional yeah, movie yeah, with yeah. a powerful yeah. message. No but doubt, go ahead. No doubt. You know we had our Daishiki song went to the movies. Then I think the following year, you had the year to return. And mm-hmm. African pride was on the rise. I don't think it's a coincidence. After that happened, you get these bots that start to pop up on the internet. And a lot of them are just trolls. Let's just tell it like it is. Because you can't find these people on the streets. But right. they, you can find them on the computer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's not a movement. That's not being organized. You know what I'm saying? One thing we lack it as a people, we have we need organization. That's what Kwame Nkrumah, Stokely Carbacker, that's all... They used to stress all the time. So mm-hmm. just because you hollering all lie online that you are FBA or you are ADOS, you know what I'm saying? That doesn't mean yeah. that's what we should be. Because like it or not, I'm about to make a lot of y'all mad. Come on, do it. You are African. Period. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All these people who want to be anti-African, hey, go down the street in Nairobi and you'll be an African, okay? Period. Go to Lagos, Nigeria, Accra, Ghana. Until they speak, you are an African person. You know what I'm saying? Just because you have self-hate, that's a be you should tell us what we should need to be. Mm-hmm. You know, that's another frustrating part. That you is. hate Africa so much that you tell it us not to be African. Mm-hmm. We're not mm-hmm. even bothering you. We let you be what you want to be. And for for African American to hate Africa. Yeah. Do you see that as white supremacy? Of course. Uh, it's divided cocker. You know, I'm going to tell it like it is. You know, I know for a fact white people divide us. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I remember a while back in the U.S. while I was working as not a fire job. This one white guy came to me and said Africans don't like African Americans. Yep. He, he came, a white guy. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I, I didn't tell him to his face about mine. I'm like, dude, what makes you think you can speak on our relations? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I, I remember I saw a South African YouTuber. She's from the U.S. And, uh, she said she had the same issue, you know, the Bazungas in South Africa would be like, stay away from these Africans, right? But she said when she got there, they was the Ebelun. So I know they do this. They do this. They do this. Y'all, the, the seed that, that has been planted about Africans don't like African Americans, that is a seed that was planted by the white man. Oh, and, the, and that is, like you said, a part of the divide and conquer. Mm-hmm. I can remember when I was a little girl. When I was a little girl in church, I can remember like missionaries and even black church leaders would tell us that we should be happy that the missionaries came to Africa and we should also be happy that we were the ones that were taken as slaves Mm -hmm. because we know Jesus and the Africans don't know Jesus. They worship chickens and all of that stuff and we should be happy that we know Jesus and that we were the ones taken from the continent. Mm -hmm. I remember that and I'm I'm 51. Mm -hmm. I remember being taught that we should be blessed and we should be happy mm-hmm. that we're the ones that were taken from Africa because we live in, look, y'all live in America. Mm-hmm. The poor Africans are struggling. They're not like y'all. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's also it's, a part of that. You know, the condi- religion played a huge part mm-hmm. in promoting the conditioning mm-hmm. and the, the divide and right. conquer. Hey, mm-hmm, no doubt. Hey, you know, uh, you know, 
I go both ways with religion. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't associate myself with any religion, though mm-hmm. I am spiritual. A yeah. lot of times people assume that if you're not a Christian, you're not a Bush, if you're an atheist. I'm not true. I yeah, believe that. You know what I'm saying? So we definitely had that mindset, you know, that, it, you know, through the church and stuff like that, that it's still backwards. You know the what I'm saying? Jesus? Mm-hmm. But also the Christian names. Yeah. Have you, like, I would have somebody's name is, um, let's say, Eva. Yeah. Okay. No, Melissa. Let's yeah. go with Melissa. Yeah. And so I will always say, well, what is your Kenyan name? Yeah. Kenyan name. Oh, Wangadi. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But my Christian name is Melissa. Yeah. So I'm like, where is Melissa in the Bible? Yeah. Where is Melissa? That's not your Christian name. That's mm-hmm. Melissa is not a Christian name. Yeah. Religion, I mean, um, Melissa is a, a Mazungu name, yes. a Western name. Yeah. They gave you that name yeah, you and know. saying that it's a Christian name, and that's not true. Yeah, you know, it kills us. You know, they got some beautiful names. They don't even beautiful. One God, Waringa, Waringa. Yeah, and somebody told me they said you look like a Lua Nefula. Yeah. I was like, that's a pretty name. Y'all have beautiful yeah. names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so you know, we did get away from the Beckys and. And uh, you know, fates and yeah, no disrespect no. to y'all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like my different. name, look at my name. My yeah. name is Karen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my yeah. name is Karen. And I yeah. say I am gonna change my name, but yeah. my name is Karen, right? Mm-hmm. And so I have the most common westernized Mazungu name, Karen yeah. Smith. Yeah. And so but I do want to officially mm-hmm. change, you know, yes. my name mm-hmm. because that's, you know, I'm I'm gonna keep Karen in honor of my mother. Yes. But that last name is going yeah. is, is mm-hmm. going away. And so I love, you know, and Jad and Jetty, you mm-hmm. know, these I mean the beautiful Swahili and yeah. African names that we have, and people should be able to respect you enough mm-hmm. to learn how to pronounce your name. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. True. And so, yeah, and so Speaking of okay, so you 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 chose Kenya, mm-hmm. all right. Yeah. This, this is this is um is this home for you? This home for real? Yeah, I've been here almost a year and a half, so it's home especially home. This is home. Yeah. Y'all heard yeah. it. This is home. Yeah. He's found home. He's found peace. Mm-hmm. Now you also said something about a fiance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said something about a fiance. We yeah. want to know about the fiance. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I met her uh, but my first trip here. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, at the same time, I was planning my trip to Kenya, you know. I was looking online to see if I could get lucky with a woman here uh, because mm-hmm. uh, I always had a love for African women from the continent. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they're just very humble, friendly. But no, mm-hmm. a lot of times in the U.S., they already take it. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And their husband come back and get up and stuff like that. So I told myself, I love to travel. Let me see if I can find one here. So, you know, I got to know her for... Several months before I even came to Kenya. And mm-hmm. one thing I liked about her is she was very consistent. Ah, you know, she was then, consistent. You know, uh, she didn't just talk to me for 30 minutes on Monday that I hear back from her on Thursday. And another thing I liked about her, uh, with all due respect, not everybody do, do this, but she never asked me for money <gasps> at all. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Not even a single shilling. Yeah, I was waiting for that because I met her on a site called Afro Introduction. I was talking to other people. They have African. men on that site too. Afro <laughs> introduction. Afro introduction. Yes, 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 yes. Afro introduction. I was talking to other women trying to figure out who's who's the right one out me, right right one for me. And uh after a while, two conversations, oh my baby sick, or you know, or they say, Oh, I need money for this, that, can you help me with my rent? It was always almost cut, but it never came for her. Mm-hmm. Even to this day, we've been together for about three and a half years. She have never misused my funds. Wow. If, I, if, I, if I give her 2,000 shillings and she goes to the store, something called 200, I'm going to get 1,800 back. Wow. You know so she's, she's proven very her yeah. honest and she's yeah. very trustworthy. Mm-hmm. And being honest mm-hmm. and being trustworthy, that I think that goes yeah. a very, very long yeah. way. She really took care of me my first trip, too. When yeah. I came to kill you, I wasn't by myself. She met me at the airport, made sure nobody scared me, took me to places, told me what to watch for, what not to watch for. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. so I mm-hmm. appreciate her. So me. sweet, y'all. Yeah. She, she has a beautiful spirit and she is so sweet. Yeah. This, when I was, when I, you know, there's a couple of people that get out on YouTube, especially African-American men. Mm-hmm. They believe to love 
a, a African woman or African, you know, anywhere on the continent, yeah. they have to degrade African American women. That's when oh I get pissed God. off and mad. I get I get so upset yeah. by that so you're because that, that's you know, another part of white supremacy. Now yeah. you're trying to divide. But let right? me tell you, let me tell y'all something. Okay, let me, let me break it down to you, especially the men out here. I can't speak. I can't speak for the women and what they look if if they're looking for an African man. But I'm speaking for the men out here. Y'all gonna be shocked about something, especially when it comes to Kenya. If you think you're coming to Kenya and run over a woman, you're here for a rude awakening. Mm -mm. They will cuss you out like some of our African American sisters. So you gotta treat them right. You gotta do it right. You can't play no games. You can't cheat on them. You can't run over them. Don't think because, oh, I'm an African American. They just gonna bow down mm -mm. and just do anything for you. Mm -mm. Trust me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They will let you know. Me and my fiance, we fuss all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She's not going to back down to me. She never once saw me be like, oh, he's from America. Let me wipe his feet. She, nope. If she disagree about something, she will put me in she my She's going to let you know. She's going to let me know. She gonna, so we gotta, do do y'all hear that? Yeah. Like, so he, so he fell in love mm. with a Kenyan woman. Yeah. He has a natural desire. He always was attracted to African women, yeah. you know, on the continent, yeah. right? He he's not choosing her because he feel like, well, she's gonna be submissive and not talk <laughs> back. Yeah. She's but gonna in love. And so I I wish I can get everybody to understand this. It's about you know who you fall in love with. Don't come here and act as if. You're going to run over our African sisters. Mm -hmm. Like, no, right, right. I don't care. You, you, you're not gonna come here because you, you have some toxic masculinity mm -hmm. going on. It's like, oh, uh, I'm gonna yeah. go and get me an African woman. Yeah. But what you're doing is, you know, you bring all your toxicity on yeah. our African sisters, and we don't want that. And so, but I do always say, if African, if an African, because I have four brothers, right? Mm -hmm. Well, one of, well, two of them married, mm -hmm. but I, I have four brothers, okay. and. I would rather, especially my brothers, you know, they, they can make, they make, they have money, they make good livings or whatever. If you can't find a woman in America, mm. come to the continent. We have beautiful women brothers. Everywhere. Brothers, y'all listen to me. Mm. There's beautiful women on this continent. Like you can come here, but you come healthy and treating them right, yeah, right? You can come and you can. Like Jamal, you have a whole family. This yeah. Jamal, this African American man, have come to the continent. He has he adopted a whole another family okay. that that he can join with his American family, right? Mm -hmm. So they're one family, which is a beautiful thing. Yeah. So if you are a brother and you can't find a woman on in America, come to Africa. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of beautiful women mm -hmm. here, but don't come with the mindset. Mm -hmm. Don't come with your toxicity. Uh, what well, these African American women is no check. Go into yourself, and I think women should do the same yeah, thing okay. when it comes, you know, to men, right? Mm -hmm. When you come, I so I just think I, I what breaks my heart is when I see our young sisters, our African sisters here on the continent with eighty year old Mzungu yeah, men, yeah, like y'all. Yeah. Yeah, there's you know. Uh, you know, young African women sometimes to find, to be able to make it, they mm -hmm. have to settle for, you know, these old wrinkled Mzungu men mm -hmm. they, that they're with. And, um, and then I just person. believe that our African American brothers, if you can find a sister here yeah. on the continent, do it. Mm -hmm. If you find you an African American sister, do mm -hmm. it, y'all. It's mm -hmm. about love. It's about black love mm -hmm. and bringing black families oh, together. Yeah. It, it, oh, it's about like to back on going back to what we discussed earlier today about inviting our fellow African American sisters and brothers here to the continent. Now you have to have the mindset that you know every black person from America should come to. To Africa. Do you think that? That they no, should? No, no longer. No why why you don't that. think every you black know, person should? Marcus Garvey yeah. said, you know, he said that we don't expect to take everyone back to Africa because some are no good here they'd be no good in Africa. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. very true. You know what I'm saying? So don't think uh, bringing you know, somebody from America to Africa, they're going to change. They, if they already have a program, what they think about Africa, they're going to keep on with the same stereotypes. 
Right. So mm-hmm. if they're white, if you a black white supremacist, yeah. that's why if you a yeah. black white supremacist yeah. in America, you're going to try to come here to be a black white supremacist. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what I mean by that, yeah, yeah. right? So mm-hmm. you have this mindset uh, that you're you're better or you're supreme, right? Mm-hmm. If you come, if you have that, don't come. Yes, yes, yes. Don't come. Right. Don't come. Like th- these these are our brothers and yeah. sisters. And I would I would even say that's not Africa, just African American, but America, yeah. Americans, even the white ones come here. And I saw one at immigration the other day, and he bombarded the line, and you know, uh, going yeah. off. And that, and I was like, he's he's crazy. He looked like a nut. Yeah. And that black security guard said, No, 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 no. You do not come. You do not come through this uh, line like this. No, 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 no. He shut him down. Yeah. He shut him down. You know. And so it's like you don't. You think you're better than everybody else. You turning red and all this stuff. Like, go sit down. Mm-hmm. You know. So. You're right. Every African American is not meant to come to Africa. If you think that you are better than our brothers and sisters on this continent in mm-hmm. any way, stay in America. It's almost as if you want to have a training course. Like, you know, we got to give you a test to see what your mindset right? is. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you have that, that poisonous mindset and everything. Wrong with this world is because of Africa. Like this, this thing. Yeah. Like I, said, I don't even try to argue with them no more. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we get these negative people talking bad about Africa, blaming Africa for all the problems and stuff like that. I don't. I just. I said people stop giving them attention. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then when I see African Americans that say we're gonna stay here and fight, first of all, our ancestors fought what for 400 yeah. years. And you're going to stay there and you're going to birth children into a system of fighting. Mm -hmm. Why do you need to fight for what you already are? Yes. You already powerful. Mm -hmm. You are, you already, um, you talking about equality. You already have equality. Mm -hmm. You already have justice, right? Mm -hmm. It's up to you to stand up to who, and these are for Africans too. We are a powerful people. Mm -hmm. African people are the most powerful people on the planet. Do you hear me? I don't care if you're in Jamaica, if you're in the UK. Mm -hmm. African people are powerful. It's up to you to stand up and come into alignment with who you are Mm -hmm. as an African, yes. right? Yes. We are powerful. You, We have got to decolonize our mind yes. thinking that the white man is better. No, mm-hmm. America wouldn't be America if it wasn't if it weren't for Africans. No doubt. Africans, no right? Doubt. Mm-hmm. Because it was Africans that were taken from this continent that had the wisdom, the skills, yeah. the knowledge to build America. Yeah. It was Africans. And mm-hmm. for some... They did a good job with divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Because Africans on that's still on the continent, they don't even look at America and say Africans built mm-hmm. one of the most powerful countries mm-hmm. in the world. Right. They don't even look at America like that mm-hmm. because they don't even see us as being African. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But we're African people. So yeah. it's just about us coming into alignment. When I first got here and I saw those African men building furniture and all that stuff on the side of the road, I was like, mm-hmm. they are just, they have the talent. Mm-hmm. I went on the side of the road to buy my my, my first sofa. Yeah, okay. When I saw those car materials, mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. wow, the talent, the gift mm-hmm. that African men have here. I had one that reupholstered my, my couch in about an hour. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. and so yeah, so anyway, mm-hmm. I don't mean to be going off no, on all that because we some po- we are so we are such powerful, beautiful people. We you just need to know it, and it's, yes. and we have to know it by decolonizing yes, you know, our mind. And we don't we don't realize, uh, uh, fortunately, the education system here could be better because even the school system, at least here in K, I know it's like this in other African country. You know, they give you more of a Western education. You know, a lot of these schools have the, the Christian uh, religion within their curriculum. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And, and they already teach them how powerful Africa used to be. You know what I'm saying? So it's just... You know, well, they that, don't teach they them. They don't, you know? Yeah. So, so a, lot of, a lot of them don't know how powerful the, the royalty they come from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we got to... First of all, what I be... Well, here's what criticism I have, especially with uh, with Kenya, and it's it's bittersweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that's bittersweet is here in Kenya, almost everybody knows English. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can go to anybody if I get lost, speak to them. That's the second national language. But you should have forget what your original language. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so, for example, here in Kenya, almost every school system is in English. 
from primary school all the way through college. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's just kind of contradicting. You know, so why you go, are you going Western to better yourself? Right. You know what I'm saying? You have to invest here in Kenya. And what, one thing we have to realize this is, is uh, I don't want to be too judgmental, mm -hmm. but we cannot have our best, all our best minds in Africa leave. Going to British, or, listen. Uh, to the U.S., to China. Because it's already common sense if you take the doctors, the lawyers, the manufacturers, the educators to another country. All, all that's left are the criminals, the people who are not as educated. They're going to run the country down. Mm -hmm. So we have to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We have to study um, a country like China. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize how poor China used to be. Mm -hmm. China invested in themselves. You can't even have Facebook in China. That's true. You know, if it's not China owned, they say get get rid of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to judge people too much. If you got a family, you want to do what's best for you. Right. But at the same time, we can't have all our everybody. Best minds. All the best minds came run to the win. West. Yeah. Like stay sacrifice. here building Kenya. Because see, the West is coming to Kenya. I'm like, well, do we need an exchange program? You, we can swap. Yeah. yeah. You, no, you don't no. you don't want your citizenship in Kenya? Okay. You can, let's swap, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it, because I see the the power. Africa is the future to mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. Africa, do you believe that? Like I, I Africa know. is the future to the world, mm -hmm. y'all. Don't run. If you can make a living in your country, mm -hmm. stay. Make a living in your country. If you got to go to the West, understandable, but come back. Mm -hmm. You know, go get your skills, make yeah. your money, and yeah. come back to your country, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah, you know and so yeah, so. Anyway, so what? Oh, this is another thing I wanted to ask you. Do you think what what could what is what are some of the things that you think African Americans can do when we come on the continent to um, help? Well, first we gotta uh, integrate with the locals. You know, just like I told you earlier. You know, what I mean, uh, all due respect to my my other people here. You know, I'm I'm with among the locals. I'm really yeah. in. This is what you call the rugby. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. we just have to learn how to integrate and be understanding. Mm -hmm. you know, I had a couple people here in Kenya, quite a few. Not, not too many, maybe four or five people call me a nigga, right? Really? You know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to judge them or get mad at them. Because they don't know. They don't know. Because you got to realize they have seen more movies about the word and how we use that as a source of idea, but and they probably never been taught now one time with, with the original... Meaning that where it came from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So instead of getting mad, hey, man, why you call me that? It's yeah. up to us to school them. Yes. Because we really, one thing that mm -hmm. really bothers me, you know, like I said, going back to sometimes we want to blame Africa for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. it's not fair because you got to realize, how do we expect them to know what we're going to do in America when they got their own structure? I say that all the time. You know what I'm I say that all the time. Yeah. Like, we come with this expectation, like, yeah. the Kenyans is ready to do, like, black power. They don't know nothing about yeah. what we, some of the things that yeah. we've gone through. And you cannot judge them or hold them, you know, because yeah. they were dealing with their own stuff. Yeah, yeah. People, that's a learning America, thing, though. Yeah, in America, they ain't one local official in it. Can't any, tell you. Any African country. Just one can't local tell you. Uh, can't uh, tell you. Uh, 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 they can't even name one president. No. But they expect an African person. But they expect person. the Africans to know everything about us. Yeah, you know but that's I mean? a part of our trauma. One of the reasons why I do these videos is to teach African Americans like to prepare them emotionally and mentally. Yeah. See, you can learn how to get a visa and the plane tickets and all that stuff. But if your mind is not right when yeah. you come to Africa, yeah. your dream is going to become a nightmare real quick. Mm -hmm. Because we a lot of times when we come, we come with all these unrealistic expectations, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so that was one of the things that I think we need to do when, as yeah. we're preparing. The ones who's pulled to come, they need to be ready here. Yes, yes, yes. But, you know, I just feel in my spirit, I feel spiritually yeah. that, you know, that the universe is bringing all black people together yes. from the uk america caribbean jamaica we're coming together i believe mm. that i believe the tables is about to turn yes, yes. i just feel that yes. like because we're, we're waking up mm -hmm. so many people so many of us are waking up you know mm -hmm. how unheard of it was for us to come back here even when garvey was doing it right mm -hmm. people were still like we ain't going back to africa mm -hmm. and so now here's this movement again yes mm -hmm. it, it, it's not gonna stop it's know? not stopping it's not stopping you know i'm saying our history is too rich we uh we t we're too rich of a people. Yeah, yeah. we too, uh this YouTuber. His name is uh Pan African Dance of Strike Back. Mm -hmm. You know, um Brandon. And uh he made a good point on one of his shows one day. He said, uh you ask a lot of these anti African people what their source are, 
It's another YouTube video. Ah. You know what I'm saying? You know, back in the day, when you have And some of them who, never even been on the continent, yeah, they're right? They never been on the continent, they but they think they're more than right? African people. <laughs> You know what I mean? And, you know, back when we had actual scholars like John Henry Clark, uh, Dr. Ben, mm -hmm. uh, Amos, Amos Wilson, mm -hmm. we had actual scholars. They used to actually study books, hundreds of books. Cross reference. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And really break it down. Yeah. About now we look to YouTube or what all people do is give it their opinion with no facts. We live in an age where we have a lot of. Access to information, but we have to have the ability to think for ourselves because people are mis, you know, taking us the wrong, the wrong way, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, with this misinformation. So, if you don't think for yourself, you don't listen to some of these idiots. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And so, look, this has been so, this has been powerful. This has been amazing. Uh, one more thing, I keep, mm -hmm. I want to let you go, but I keep, no, I I'm keep coming up with something. <laughs> Early. What do you what what do you think we can do? You know, we have there's a lot of us that's here as an expat group, right? Mm -hmm. I you know what do we what can we do like as a group? Do you think that it is necessary to formalize as an official group here to um, yeah, to true. become more organized? I, I what do wish, you think? I wish uh, Kenya would be more open to promoting us. Promoting us. You know, what I'm yeah. saying uh, one thing I give Ghana credit is. They literally reached yeah. out to African Americans. That's what I'm hit. That's literally. what I'm hit. Yeah. Here, unfortunately, you know, when you find anything about coming to Kenya, you see the Messiah and you see a Mazungu jumping up with the Messiah. <laughs> yeah, the Mazungu. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, I wish they would reach more to specifically us in America. Yeah. And come over here. Like you said, we are growing the numbers. And I think more of us are going to come to Kenya. And we you, are and, coming and, to and Kenya. You, notice, you you talk to a lot of um, African Americans who've been to multiple um, African country. It's like Kenya always win. Kenya win. Yeah, that's you true. You know what I'm saying? So this about this might be the next hub, the next wave. Yeah, and I've seen people who went to Ghana and they came to Kenya. It was like we're, yeah. we're moving to Kenya. Yeah, you know, and they have moved to Kenya, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. so Kenya is. I mean, it's amazing. I think a lot of it too is education yeah. because th when they think about African Americans in Africa, they always say, "Oh, well, they come from West Africa." When in actuality. Mm -hmm. That was the pickup spot. Yeah, we Africans, period. We're we Africans, cannot label period. ourselves to a tribe or a country. Mm -hmm. This whole continent used to be us. This whole continent. You know what I'm saying? So we got to represent for all the ancestors. All the ancestors. Yeah, I realize just like, you know, uh, I'm from Ohio, but my great-grandparents are from Arkansas. But I still claim Ohio. They migrated to Ohio back in the, in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They ain't where you're originally from. It's the same thing with Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, people of Ghana... Thousands of years ago, they might have been in the Congo. Mm -hmm. People in Nigeria, thousands of years ago, they might have been in Sudan. Mm -hmm. And they migrated that way. So we got to claim all that. Yeah. yeah. Do you, does, does, does the transatlantic slave trade and thinking about it, does it, do you have a different perspective of it in any way since being on the continent as opposed to in America? Uh, no, it's about to say. It's the that, same? Yeah, yeah. Something changed for me, and I didn't. I don't know if it was if it's just me, mm -hmm. but when I came here, and I said this in another video, when I came here, it was my I, I was new, yeah. and I stayed um, at an Airbnb that a Kenyan owned. I stayed in her compound. Mm -hmm. This lady had a huge house. She's a Kenyan, right? Mm -hmm. And she's she's she she has money, mm -hmm. right? And there was a part of me I felt funny in the inside mm -hmm. because I still had the perspective of. African struggling. This is yeah. you have to remember. This is my second time on the you know on the continent, yeah. but this time it wasn't just no two week trip, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so something hit me. I was all. It, it was almost like a. I witnessed a black community progressing mm -hmm. outside of us yes. that weren't you know. And then another thing hit me. Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, this there's this black community progressing that we I wasn't aware of." Mm -hmm. Right, but then also, can you imagine being a black person in the world that's pro progressing, but you don't have the memory or the knowledge of the transatlantic mm -hmm. slave trade? Mm -hmm. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, dang! Like she is. This lady is doing very well. She's she's a Kenyan. She has money, but she doesn't have that 
thing that we all are born yeah. into. Mm-hmm. We, we it, racism and mm-hmm. you know part of our trauma, right? Mm-hmm. And so after being here a while, I I started thinking about the transatlantic slave trade a little differently. Yeah. Instead of reliving the emotional pain of it, mm-hmm. I am transcending it, mm-hmm. not. To erase it out of out of our yeah. mind, mm-hmm. but transcending it in a, like to honor it, to yeah. stand on the shoulders of our ancestors, mm-hmm. and them looking at us and being so proud. Because mm-hmm. see, what 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 some of those people don't realize, they say, "Oh, our ancestors fought," but they don't realize when our ancestors first got to America, they was trying to get back to Africa. Yes, yes, and yes. so I look at those ancestors mm-hmm. and I said, "I'm trans. I'm I'm gonna transcend." this negative feelings about it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stand on those ancestors' shoulders and they looking at me and saying, y'all made it back. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, here's one thing, you know, that we have to realize. Um, you know, these anti-African movements always want to talk about how we sold each other to America. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Right, let's just say that's partially true. Mm-hmm. But do they ever talk about the thousands and millions of Africans who fought for us to who fought the um, colonizers, who fought for for slavery not to occur. Yes, it's throughout history. Yes, that, you know, thousands of Africans, Africans died. fought. They did not want you know us to them this taking a, us. This is this a picture over here? You know, with some of these pan Africanists, of, of freedom fighters, mm-hmm. who really tried to stop the colonialism from happening. Yeah, you know, millions of people died. So just because you know that the Europeans might have won these wars. Of these battles because the war yeah. is not over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that every single person, two billion people on the continent, was part of the people who sold us out. Yeah. Because billions of people fought. They it, fought. They Africans fought for yeah, us. Yeah, they yes. fought for us. They act like they just came over here and brought us with one tribe. The Muzungus <laughs> over here for hundreds of years before mm-hmm. they had their plan go to work. Yes. You know yes. what I'm saying? And, and while doing that, they had to battle a lot of. African people go study the, the war in Angola. Mm. They fall off the Portuguese. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Same day with Rwanda or even in Ghana. They was led by Queen Ashantiwa. Mm. You know what I'm saying? She went to battle against the Europeans. Yeah. You know, so many of us fought against them, but yeah, we always focus on the ones who might have uh, supposedly sold them. Mm-hmm. You know, that, yeah, that's not right. That's not right. Mm-hmm. That's not right. So look, this has been amazing. Mm-hmm. Your fiance got it smelling good up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to eat good. We're going to eat good. Tell your dishes. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, where can the people find you? Tell the people where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Jamar Brewer. You know, uh, you can find me on IG with the same name. Or follow me uh, on Facebook, by, uh, my fan page. It ain't, it ain't about me, but it's about black history, about Black news and what's the name black, of your fan page? Uh, black knowledge. Black knowledge. I black follow you. I've been following you for years. Yeah, that's me. Black knowledge. Yeah. This black knowledge, this black y'all. Knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This black knowledge. So yeah, okay. go to Facebook. Uh, I'm gonna put the link and everything yeah. below. Yeah, you know, um, black black knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, Jamal Brewer yeah. on IG. Instagram and Twitter. Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to right, pick up? I appreciate you uh, for inviting me on. Next interview will be uh, over your place. Yes, yeah. he's coming to my house yeah. next time. Yeah, yeah. we got to make it happen. Yes. And I appreciate your wisdom because you're really knowledgeable. And, uh, Thank you. We need more people like you here to spread the good. Thank you so yeah. much. And it's an honor sitting here yes. with you and Likewise. your family. Um, I love your spirit. Yeah. I love your family. Uh-huh. I love your home. It's so warm. Yes. And so thank you so much for having me. Oh, no problem. All Anytime. right. Anytime. So y'all, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Don't forget to follow Jamal. Peace. And Peace. we're out. Peace Bye. <laughs>